In this project video, I show the construction and testing of three SAPA plates that were made from materials found at local hardware stores that could handle threats ranging from the 762 by 39 M193, M855, and the 762 by 54R. So let's get started. Second one, third one. Zero pass-throughs. Three shots of an M855. Green tip. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So for hitting 10,000 subscribers, I promised to do some full-size Sapa plate inserts. And um, to make good on that promise, today I'm unveiling the first three in this kind of ongoing uh, series, which is just cranking out some full-size plates, taking what we learned from the small ones and applying it to a larger scale. Up first are three plates that are constructed entirely out of materials you can get at a hardware store. Their weights range from eight and a half pounds all the way up to nine and a half. I was trying to keep them under nine, but two of them actually made that, right at nine and under nine. Um, they also cost less than $50 to make, one of which my favorite one was the lightest and the cheapest. This one right here, the first plate you will see today. This hook handled uh, three shots from the M855 and six shots from the M193. Very impressive for homemade armor, right? I'm very excited about that because this little green tip has been quite difficult to stop with homemade armor. And the fact that it handled three is a pretty impressive fact. So anyways, let's go ahead and get, I'll give you guys a brief rundown of what these um, plates are constructed of. Head out to the range, shoot them up so you guys can see the ballistic footage, and then we'll go into deep details on how to construct these, you know, yourself at home. And at the end, we'll talk about how you could improve upon it, because I think with utilizing high-density polyethylene as a laminate instead of resin, you might actually be able to get them down a little bit on weight, although it might bulk up their thickness a little bit. So, alright guys, that's a lot to cover, so let's get started. So the three plates were constructed with basically the same materials, and that was porcelain coated with an elastomer resin for the strike face and fiberglass welding blankets impregnated with polyester resin for a backer. The only real difference was the welding blankets, as I chose three different brands to see how that would affect the ballistic performance. And what this ended up doing is affecting both the resin consumption and the overall weight of the plates. I'll provide a far more detailed uh, construction montage and why I chose the materials that I did later in the video. For now, I just wanted you guys to know what you were looking at before the, they were shot. I also want to mention ZNA Productions fiberglass welding video that he did a few years back, as that plate was the inspiration for these backers. I believe in giving credit where it's due, and had it not been for that video, this one might not exist. I'll provide a link in the description on where you can see his in action. All right, so because the plates don't fit on my clay witness, and we're not gonna angle them to try to get it to work, because it's just, it, it won't give us an accurate rating if we're being honest. Um, we're just standing them up and shooting them this way. So yeah, we won't get the back face deformation readings on them, but I will make some small tiles in the future so we can actually get readings off of the clay, or I'll just build a bigger clay witness in the future, but, at least we'll know if it's a pass or a fail. Uh, when it comes to fiberglass, it's actually pretty good at resisting back face deformation, so it'll either catastrophically fail or be very minimal, much like uh, certain things like steel. So I'm hoping that we don't see any major like domes out the back and everything stops the way it should. So, all right, I just wanted to show you guys that and uh, let's get to shooting them. Are they? Yeah, the SS 109s, also known as the uh, M855 ball. I don't have the uh, A1s. Good hit. Shot in the middle. Good hit. You can see that the uh, the resin worked pretty well at keeping the ceramic together, and zero pass-throughs out the back. First plate is a success.
awesome, thank you. So here's second one, third one. Zero pass-throughs. Three shots of an M855 green tip. Check that out. Tell you what, I'll start shooting a few more uh, standard rounds through it. We'll see how it holds up. Yeah, you want to just dump, uh, do some, like do a mag dump of yeah. M193? All right. mag dump one pass through otherwise one pass through out of all of those but that hit the same spot as another is a yeah is an 88 did that yeah. one 193 hit the same spot as an 88 and I think that's why it passed through yeah ma55 <laughs> <get> it right. <laughs> it's okay so <laughs> I literally looked for a different spot on everything, but the bottom, I actually went to hit right. the same area that was already busted just to see what that would do. Yep, and sure enough, one pass through, all the others stopped, so. All right, going hot. Good hit. M855 again. There's the entry. Zero pass through. So this was the heaviest of the three plates. Zero pass through. First and second layer, interestingly, completely where the other ones it didn't. But it did in fact stop it. All right, so that one actually stopped the traditional full metal jacket, 148 grain. Now we're on to the LPS. Mild steel core penetrator, silver tip stuff. Yeah, it was very edge. You can actually see. No, that was from earlier. It is shot. So we have. Oh, interesting. Where's the. There's the pen. There it is. Here we go. Right there. Was it there? Okay. Well, it did. It did stop. So, look, you can actually start seeing the ceramic delaminating from the fiberglass. But it's still there. You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Actually stopped right on it. That's fun. Okay. Put the other one in it over here if you can. Oh boy, that barely stopped, but it did. It stopped right on the edge there. Check that out. Good hit. Yes, sir. That's fun. Also, not a pass through. So, another successful stop of. All right, I wanted to discuss the third one like this and kind of just show clips as we didn't shoot it as many times as the other two. And it also performed the worst. This one weighed nine pounds, right, or two ounces over. So initially we shot it with the M855 at the very edge right there. Now this one probably skirted out, it was an edge strike, so we then shot it again, and it actually stopped right, right here. But first thing I noticed is right there, the bulge and the fibers were splitting, right? Indicating that it, uh, it was getting really deep into this fiberglass. This, this stuff is uh, coated in acrylic, a fire retardant acrylic, right? And so then we shot it with the um, 7.62 by 54R, the LPS, went right through, as you can see, right there, right? What's interesting is some of the jacket is right there. Anyways, so it's it went through though. It pulled all the fibers through, and then we shot it with just uh, we stepped it back down to the full metal jacket, and it also made it through. So this one, honestly, I mean it it did stop an M855, 
So it probably could have stopped the M193 as well, but what's peculiar is the fact that it couldn't handle the uh, full metal jacket out of the Mosin. So it everything was right on the edge of being able to stop. So I just wanted to point that out. If you're going to try this, stay away from the acrylic coated stuff and focus on this type, the other type you can buy. These performed really well. I was thinking also, after shooting it, you know, some of these held together really well. This uh, one Mosin shot at the bottom kind of broke and shot this piece off. One way to kind of mitigate that that I want to try is to actually add an extra layer of fiberglass on the top when I use this polymer coating. Um, I think it would actually act as a way to keep the ceramic together better from blowing off with the bigger bullets because the smaller high velocity bullets they're just going to keep barreling through right but the big ones they just they disintegrate on that ceramic and it throws ceramic all over the place check that one out though I love that shot of the M193 right there so anyways alright guys let's go ahead and start talking about how to construct these now I just wanted to you know kinda summarize everything that we've seen so far so now on to the construction portion. I'll provide links in the description for all the materials used for these plates so you can find them. Now I started with the ceramic strike face. For this I chose the Capri Classics from Lowe's. This was due to the fact that when I did my ceramic tile showdown video, these tiles weighed 3.2 pounds for a full square foot, but were still capable of stopping rifle rounds. I cut these down to 12 by 10s and cut off the shoulder angles and the bottom corners off so that the plates didn't restrict movement. This dropped the weight for the base plate down to 2 pounds 8 ounces, which meant that doubling up the strike face gave us 5 pounds, about a pound more than a legitimate alumina oxide tile weighs. After the base plate was cut, I decided to go with smaller tile arrays on top rather than another full mono tile. This was done to help increase multi-hit capability of the plates. I also undersized the tile array by a quarter of an inch on all sides. I figured edge strikes are not counted by the NIJ, and if a bullet caught the edge of the top plate, it would still have plenty of material underneath, which we saw with the 762 by 39 So I'm using a cheap wet saw for all the ceramics, but you could always get just a simple tile cutter. They are far cheaper and work great they're just a lot more time cutting. So I played with a few different sizes but tried to keep everything bigger than a 2 inch by 2 inch square out of fear that it might end up losing stopping power if they were made to be too small. I also staggered the seams so no four corners would meet as that would be a weak point in the array. Also by undersizing the array the total weight went under 5 pounds for the ceramic strike face so there's that. Now on to the fiberglass welding blankets. The first two had this folded over sewn edge and grommets stitched in. I began cutting out one of the grommets on the edge and removing the stitching along the folded part. I then laid the base plate on the fabric being careful to try to avoid the holes created from removing the grommets. The Chicago electric welding blanket was a 4 foot by 6 foot piece so I was able to get around 28 layers. The other two were 5 by 5 feet and I got 30 layers from them. Now on to lamination. I decided to use 25 layers from each blanket rather than all of them. This was to keep it as light as possible and was based off of previous test samples I've done. Now when it comes to fiberglass welding blankets the stuff really wants a lot of resin. I would make up small batches of 4 to 5 ounces at a time and apply it with a brush and really press it in. It's easy to overdo it with resin as this fabric will take as much as you will give and more resin doesn't make a stronger composite. My advice is to do small batches slowly, slowly building up the composite and working the resin into every fiber. I stopped at 20 layers to compress the plate and allowed it to cure overnight before adding the final five layers. Once it was all dry, I traced and cut the edges with a cutting wheel to clean up the sides and get it back down to the original shape. So after compressing, curing, and cutting, it was time to attach the porcelain. 
For this, I use the Vulcan 116 polyurethane sealant. Something previously shown on my Improving Ceramic Armor's Durability video. I found great success with this stuff. I cleaned everything with acetone and measured out two ounces for attaching the base plate to the composite. As you can tell, I was constantly weighing everything to see how close I could get to my goal. I just used a metal spreader to cover the back with resin. Once covered, I placed it on the base of the composite and moved it side to side to get all the air out. I then attached the tile array the same way. I let this set up overnight and then I coated the entire surface with the resin to fully encase it. Alright guys, so it's finally over. Let's talk about a few optimizations. I think attaching fiberglass to the front with the Volcom resin might be a very good way of uh, keeping the ceramic from flying off. I haven't tested this yet, but I, I think that by adding some fiber reinforcement, obviously you're going to up the weight a little bit, uh, but it might actually be worth it in the long run. Uh, obviously people are going to probably ask about utilizing high density polyethylene in it and if you've seen that video where I laminated this stuff it's definitely possible it'll probably end up being a little bit thicker this first plate was about an inch and three eighths it was real close to that so you know I don't want it to bulk up too much but it would end up being lighter because a high density polyethylene is actually lighter than this resin you know like pound for pound for the amount you need in order to laminate so I might demonstrate that in the near future because that could actually bring down the cost a little bit and the weight. But I don't know. I'd have to figure out exactly how to optimize on that. But these worked great, man. Especially first and second plate. It sucks that the second one was over 9 pounds. But, you know, at least you know, stay away from the acrylic coated stuff. It doesn't seem like that stuff is that great. Huge thank you to everyone for getting me to 10,000 subscribers. I'm sorry it took me a while for me to you know actually get out here and get these sample plates I have a few more coming out like actually worked on and already tested a few other projects so in the next few weeks you're actually gonna get kind of a consistent upload I also wanted to mention uh, if you hadn't heard my discord got taken down um, I'm currently working on a plan like a backup plan because I'd like to speak to a lot of you guys again I enjoyed our little community that we created so I'm definitely going to be building something maybe on a different platform so we don't have to worry about this again because I uh, lost a lot of information that I had saved on there and that's very disappointing to me but you know we'll have a discussion about that in the next few days probably this weekend and uh but yeah thank you guys so much for getting me to 10,000 you know I don't know what's next we hit 10,000 or a hundred thousand you know if we make a full suit of armor that'd be cool I mean I'm gonna do it anyways but it'd be nice to have a hundred thousand subscribers uh, but yeah plenty of new stuff coming out in the next few uh, weeks and months guys also you can check me out on this Instagram I'm starting to upload there more frequently and if you want to you can support me on patreon there's a few guys on there and I appreciate every little bit alright guys I'll see you in the next one take care